What's up, Queendom? It's your girl, Queen Naja, and I'm here with another YouTube video. Before I get into the video, I just want to say, if you guys have not streamed, misunderstood, or listened to the album yet, make sure y'all go listen to the album. I feel like I've done a very great job, and I feel like a lot of people still haven't heard it. it period. Go stream misunderstood, period. I'm here today because I'm doing a video um, reacting to, not reacting to, but more so just breaking down what I meant about the first song on my album called Too Much To Say. A lot of people just, they they really like this song um, because they said they could relate to it a lot. So I'm here to break down what I meant. I know a lot of people did reactions to my song Too Much To Say. A lot of people just like made their own theories and got some things wrong. So I'm gonna tell you guys what I meant from my own lyrics that I wrote. I wrote these lyrics, I wrote this whole song. Nobody wrote this song for me. This is from my own experience. Um, if somebody ever wrote a song for me, I have no problem telling people if somebody wrote it, but I do write my music and that's just that period. Even if somebody do help me write a song, I'm still doing writing the majority of the song. Unless, like I said, I tell you guys, something was fully written, like bitter, but even I came in and changed that. So I write my music just to clear the air. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let me tell y'all what I meant. They told me that I'm running out of time. I ain't lit no more. Say my music hit and weak. It says say my music hit and weak. No, it's my music getting weak. Hit no more. Sometimes I don't want to have fame or get rich no more. Okay. If I try to stop it every time, I'm just gonna like be stopping a lot because a lot of this is wrong. I can already see. I'm gonna just read it to you. They told me that I'm running out of time. I ain't lit no more. They say my music getting weak. It don't hit no more. Sometimes I don't want to have fame or get or get rich no more. But I got two kids to feed. I can't sit no more. So the time frame that I was making this song in, you guys got to understand, I was like under a lot of pressure um, because, you know, I wasn't really putting out music. I put out Away From You and I put out um good morning text i personally feel like that those songs didn't do well um i personally didn't like those songs that much truthfully i feel like it wasn't my best work um and i kind of had like a chip on my shoulder i had something to prove i wanted I, I wanted to release uh better music really fast but i was under a lot of pressure people kept saying that i was like my time was over um and that I fell off and stuff and you know coming from a, a place where like your first song like medicine just blew up and then like kind of falling off a tad bit if you whatever they wanted to call it when I, I was really working but falling off like that just I don't know it was very discouraging at points so I was just really kind of going off of what I've seen people saying that my songs wasn't like I was a one hit wonder basically um when I said sometimes I don't want to have fame or get rich no more I was just kind of saying like um a lot comes with uh being famous a lot comes with being a public figure a lot comes with being in the public eye and um a lot comes with having money too and sometimes it just it be like you know how to say more money more problems or whatever like first of all having fame is like I'm a, I still consider myself a normal, like a, a regular girl. So, you know, when I say certain things online or when, I, when I'm trying to be myself and like people don't understand it or they think that I'm like, or people misconstrue like who I am or like they call me dumb if I'm acting myself and acting goofy or if I say a joke. Like I literally cannot say anything at all on social media without literally getting dragged or getting my words twisted and i like i think at the time i was like living in my penthouse i always would look out at the city and just could never really go out and do anything fun not even go have lunch with like friends or whatever i felt trapped you know um a, a lot of times because my security was not living there but just because like when i go out in public now it's like unless i'm going to target or something in a nice area or like a, a low area, I can't really have peace anymore, you know? 
I can't really, like I, I don't, you know, you give that up when you become in the public eye. So me being such a free spirit that just like, sometimes I was like, I don't even want this. And sometimes like, you know, money don't buy happiness, you feel me? But sometimes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was just feeling like that at that point. I feel better now, you know, so. But my kids, I got two kids to feed. I can't sit no more. So my two kids are my motivation. You know what I'm saying? I want to have the best life for them. I want to give them the best life. I want to give them everything I didn't have. I want to just be able to provide for my kids. And if this is what I have to do to provide for my kids and my family, then and I have to sacrifice like some freedom or whatever, then I just have to do it. You know, I just have to learn how to maneuver through it. And that's what I'm doing. It's 2020 y'all and I've learned to be a little bit more reserved through certain things. I'm still myself. I still say certain things. I still, you know, but I've gotten better over time. So yeah, I think I, I'm gonna ride with doing my music. But I got two kids to feed, I can't sit no more I foot the bills for everything World on my shoulders Wanna break down but I can't, I gotta hold up Wanna free my mind but I'm trying to stay sober I ain't really lived yet, I'm only getting older I got too much to say Yeah, I got too much to say I got too much to hide I got too much to say Yeah, I got too much to say I got too much to say where was that at? Sorry, y'all. I was trying to find my quick time player. Where is it at? Oh, my lord. Do I not know how to work this? Oh, what did I do? Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, sorry. I'm back. Oh, hold on, wait. Okay. So right here, it says I flipped, I flipped a bill for everything. No, I said I foot the bill for everything. World on my shoulders. I want to break down, but I can't. I got to hold up. Not, I got a holder. Who am I holding? I don't have no daughter. Like, <laughs> um, want to free my mind, but I'm trying to stay sober. Um, I don't really smoke or drink like that. Um, sometimes people get on drugs or whatever because they just can't take it. Like it's too much, and um, sometimes it's just too much for people. So they try to handle it, handle it with, um, just get taking their mind off of it by doing or drinking or like you know. So, I'm trying to stay sober, I mean, I'm not trying to get into all of that, but sometimes people free their mind through, they escape reality by doing certain things. Um, and it's sad, it's really sad that people have to, you know, do that. Um, somebody could just go from being like a super normal person to, I don't know, just um, really just being, a drug addict or alcoholic and it sucks the world we live in I ain't really live yet I'm only getting older when I say I ain't really live yet like I'm 25 I'm, I'm only getting older but like at the same time I feel like it's so much more to learn and it's so much more to do you know I haven't really traveled the world I haven't like I haven't really done a lot of things but be married and be in a family and have kids like I really haven't even I still have to find myself some more you know not find myself some more but just experience more and you know you learn something new about yourself every day so um I foot the bill for everything when I say that I don't mean that like I'm I'm like frustrated or I'm like I, I don't like have money or take care taking care of my family because that's what I feel like I'm supposed to do um you know but sometimes sometimes it gets to be a lot when you have wear so many hats and have so much to do and have so much to worry about and you know sometimes you just feel like the world is on your shoulders so 
um but that's what comes with it that's what comes with this life so you know All right, so CJ, at that point in time, CJ was going back and forth to me and his dad's house, like a month at my house, a month at his house. And like, sometimes I feel like that would confuse a child. Like, why am I here for long periods of time? Then when I go back to mommy's house, like the rules are changing. Like, why is it so like, why aren't we in the same house, you know? Um, and I try, actually, you know, he's asked questions about that already, like when he was a little bit, maybe last year. And he used to be like, mommy, remember when you was at daddy's house? Or you remember when y'all, you and daddy um, was in the same house? And it made me sad because, you know, honestly, he hasn't seen us in the same room at one time in a bit, like, since houston honestly unless like he's dropping him off to me like and i and like it's just a quick you know drop off thing or you know transfer thing and i feel like it's not his fault it's not cj's cj has nothing to do with that you know um and but it could be confusing and it could be a little traumatic it could be like a big adjustment for him but I feel like if I was to tell him right now, I can't explain everything to him. He's too young. He don't understand. I'm going to have to tell him when he gets older. And I feel like if I try to tell him that now, he's just a kid. How is he going to take all of that in, you know? Um, but, you know, mommy had to go. Sometimes when you're in a, a really messed up situation or like a toxic kind of situation, it's healthier to just leave and be happy rather than let your child grow up and see you know see the unha live in an unhappy home and see certain things that you shouldn't see you know i think it was a lot healthier to just see mommy happy and daddy happy happy separately you know instead of mommy and daddy always arguing mommy and daddy fighting mommy and daddy like you know, sometimes in those situations, you just have to leave, and that's the best thing. Okay. Um, I got scars from the past I don't talk about. I could probably ruin lives if I roll my mouth. Put makeup over my bruises and fake a smile. Turn on the camera. We have to make this. We gotta make this money now. Um. So I'm pretty sure everyone has read in between the lines of the song. Um. It's a lot of things that I haven't um, talked about online just because of the fact that it possibly could ruin people's lives. You know. And I guess I would rather not do that. I would rather just move on and forgive myself for allowing that happen and just do the right thing and forgive the person. You know, um, I feel like a lot of women can relate to being through domestic violence. A lot of women can relate to that. And um, sometimes it's super hard to leave. Like it's really hard to leave and that's all you know. It's really hard to leave because it's like a cycle. It's like, one, it's all you know. Two, the person makes you feel like if you left, you know, no one else could probably love you like they love you, although they're still hurting you at the same time. It's, it's crazy when it's like the same person that make you smile 
or no, sorry, the same person that is causing your pain is the same person that um, relieves your pain. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but like sometimes the same person that make you cry can be the same person that make you smile, vice versa. So it's hard to leave because you're a little confused. Like, okay, you know, like, well, he, he makes me feel better after this happens. Like, or he says sorry or like, you know, and it's just really hard to leave because one, it's a lot of fear in leaving too. It's just the fear of the unknown, fear of being alone, fear of nobody else wanting you, fear of what will happen to you if you do try to leave, you know? So, yeah. And then a lot of the times that I was going through certain things, um, you know, I was still doing YouTube. I was still on the camera. I was still smiling because at the end of the day, bills had to be paid. At the end of the day, I quit my, like, not quit, sorry. I got fired from my job. I quit doing nine to fives because this, this was a better life for us. Like, we had more money. So, it's like, at the same time, it's like, chuck it up. Chuck it up. You got to smile it out. You got to fake it out. Fake it till you make it type of thing. And you got to just think about the good things. And that was my mindset back then. Just think about the good things and think about the checks or think about, you know, like, um, at the end of the day, we had a baby. So I had to do what I had to do. And that was how I felt back then until like something just snapped and was like, money is not worth your mental health and your worth, you know? And women, I want you guys to, you know, recognize the same thing, like, just really 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 I know it'd be hard but you just really have to think about um the bigger picture and how damaged you could possibly how you can be like in your older days if you don't leave something you know nip it in the bud or leave leave a toxic situation um in your younger days because you will like waste all your time and get old and be like oh my god why did I allow, like, I didn't even get to live. I lived my life, most of my life, I lived in misery. Sorry, I keep skipping. It was so long. Yo, they have to chill with getting these words wrong. How do you get every time from as a child? Every time I was introduced to things that it shouldn't have been. Yo, I'm not going to lie. LBO lyrics, we have to have a talk. I, let me tell you. Let me show you. What you let me tell y'all what I meant. What it's supposed to be said right here. As a child, I was introduced to things that I shouldn't have been. Feeling hot between the legs when I shouldn't have been. And I ain't tell my mama because I didn't want the drama. 24, still living with the trauma. Um, so I feel like a lot of people that can read between the lines know what I mean. Um, I, as, you know, as a, as a younger girl, um, as a little girl, actually, I probably, I was no older than maybe like six, yeah, five or six. And, you know, some things happened when I was little with a certain family member and I want to clear the air that it was not my stepdad um a lot of people did videos saying that um it was my stepdad my sister and brother's dad um and my mom was like trying to cover it up and sleeping my mom would never be with nobody that does that that would ever do that to her kids so it was not him that man never touched me at all. Um, I won't say who it was, but just know that I went through some things as a little girl, but I didn't, I think when I was little around that age, it was like, I didn't know what I was really doing. But um, as I got older, the memory just kept staying in my head. I never told my mom, she always told me to um, tell her if anything happens, tell mommy, like always, I don't know why I didn't tell her. I think I was scared something's going to happen. And I think as I got older, I start feeling like it was my fault or I felt 
like in a way kind of just like it was my fault and it wasn't i didn't know i didn't know what was happening i didn't know what's going on um and a lot of times i don't know i just a lot of times i i like i i don't think about it at all so i'd be feeling like it don't affect me or didn't affect me as i got older but the more i talked about it i think i realized i actually was affected by it because I just got this feeling again, like this feeling. I actually um, didn't reveal it to my mom until I was a teenager, so yeah. And I was 24 when I wrote this song, so when I say 24 is still living with the trauma, it's like, it's, a tra it's traumatic for something like that to happen um, to a young girl that don't even know what's going on, you know? And I feel like I'm not the only one. I feel like so many girls has went through things like that. And um, a lot of times you hide it and you keep it a secret. Or sometimes you'll tell, tell your mom or your dad or your family or whatever. And they won't believe you. But that wasn't my case. I, I feel like my mom is crazy. So I feel like somebody would have got seriously injured or killed or something. But... I was so scared. I never liked confrontation. I didn't want to see family going feuding with family. I don't know, but as I was little, I just, I don't know. I, as I got older, I just, I don't know why I didn't say nothing, but, um, you know, I don't know, y'all. But I'm past that. I feel a lot, um, I feel better, you know, but it's just an unfortunate situation that happens in many young girls lives so yeah should have been feeling high between all that shit i should have been i ain't tell my mama cause i didn't want the drama 24 still living with the trauma yeah that's why you never see me laughing at nobody's pain no matter how hard it is my heart will never change that's why you never see me laughing hold on that's why you never see me laughing at nobody's pain not paint you never see me laughing at nobody's pain no matter how hard it gets my heart will never change that's just me saying that like although like i've been through all this stuff i've still remained to, like i've still um remain the person that i am oh i still remain this girl that can unconditionally love people and forgive people and i don't know why my heart is like this y'all but um yeah, my heart is just, I don't know. You know, the crazy thing is, like, even though people do stuff to me or, like, people say, like, at the end of the day, I might get, like, mad or say something back or, but I literally don't want anything to happen to nobody, you know? I don't want to see nobody hurt. Like, I feel bad when I see a person that has hurt me. I feel bad when I see them hurt. I never gloat in nobody's pain or, like, in nobody's trauma, like, Cause you never know what, I don't know. You just, I don't know. I'm just not like that y'all. And it's just so super hard to feel happy about somebody going through something. Um, no matter what. And I feel like I will never change. And I feel like people, people have called me stupid for being that way. People have said, girl, it couldn't be me. Cause I would do this. And do. I don't know. I'm just like this y'all. I'm just, I'm not trying to say I'm perfect. But literally, when I say there's no hatred in my heart, like, there's no hatred at all for nobody. And, um, I don't know. Like, even though I've been through all this stuff, like, I, I just continue to forgive and I just continue to love. And I can't help it. And I just feel like God has placed that in me, you know. And I'm glad. It's a great quality to have. So, I don't know why I'm like about to cry, but I'm about to get off the camera because I don't want to cry in front of people. But yeah, like I'm in a better place now. I'm happy and I just hope I wish everybody the best in life. Everyone. Um down to the people who did stuff to me. So yeah, that's all. And yeah, that's it. Love y'all and all right, gotta go. Mwah.